So for today's community call, uh, we wanted to start things off with uh, Thomas has been working on a little bit of a product plan on how we can bring Research Hub closer to the functionality of like a GitHub for Science. And we're trying to essentially like put together the steps for like that feature set where researchers can in theory publish on Research Hub, maybe have a collaborative editor, um, seek peer review, and then have funding mixed in. So Thomas, do you wanna take it away? Sure. Um, our pods aren't connecting. Can you guys hear me? Perfect. Yeah. As, as I guess a little bit of context here while Thomas figures it out, um, we were thinking about uh, trying to have like a Authoria style collaborative editor. Have you guys used that before? It's like a, a kind of like a medium editor for science. Can you share a link? Yeah, let me put up. And one of the cool things that these guys have is it's like a easy collaborative editor, kind of like Google Docs, um, but they actually are also a preprint server now too, just because people who edit, you know, together on Authoria um, will just like one button straight to the preprint server there. So it could be one of a few things that Thomas will go over of ways to potentially have some of that like primary authorship happening on Research Hub. I put a, I put a link in the messages for anybody else who's interested. All right, can you guys hear me? Perfect. Okay, great. Yeah, so basically the goal for all of this is to allow original research to be created and published within Research Hub itself. Um, yeah, so right now Research Hub is sort of like aggregating existing content similar to a website like Reddit. So we could be maybe more aptly described as Reddit for Reddit for Science currently, but um, we're planning to basically add features to move towards more of a, like a GitHub for Science, where there's work in progress research being conducted on the site itself. Yeah. So uh, the motivation for this was we we had a Hacker News thread. Um, for Research Hub, and in the comments of that thread, uh, multiple users pointed out that, yeah, like, uh, we bear a little, a little resemblance to GitHub right now in our current form. We don't use Git. It doesn't have version control. Uh, it doesn't really have community contributions to projects, more just, like, commentary after the fact. And it doesn't let people, like, open issues on the projects like GitHub would allow. And we can't Currently, I guess you can kind of like publish original papers here, but that's uh, usually it's like uploaded from somewhere else, like archive. Like it's posted there first and then sort of like linked to Research Hub. So yeah, it's not our, our priority right now. Then these two users, I don't know if you guys can read it, but they basically said, suggest like we could just basically rebuild GitHub, but orient the, the UI towards academia and like publishing and peer review. And that could be potentially valuable or better than our current product. And yeah, our about page actually does say that like we, our mission is to make research function more efficiently, similar to what GitHub has done with software engineering. Just make research function more like software engineering. So yeah, uh, some ideas to do that is basically like the, the really obvious one is we could just do sort of like what GitHub and GitLab and those sites do where you build it a platform around Git itself. Uh, like Git is the software that allows you to create these repositories and like handles the version, con version control for all of it. And GitHub and GitLab, they're actually just platforms for hosting these repositories. So, and they build around, build like extra features on top of that, like the issues and the pull requests and all, all that stuff. So 
we could go down a similar route as well. I'm not sure exactly how hard it would be to pull off like what GitHub and uh, GitLab are doing by like uh, building on top of Git. There's also concerns that scientists, they might not be familiar with Git, like Git is mainly a software engineering tool. So software engineers, they have to learn to use it basically in their job, but that's not the case with researchers. So there's, it's a pretty steep learning curve and it might be a big ask to actually ask researchers to uh, basically learn this new tool um, and that they don't already know in their current workflow. So what Authoria does, Authoria is actually an example of another platform that's built on Git, um, but they basically simplify the, the user experience. They hide a lot of Git's advanced or a lot of Git's features in general, like it has like commits and like uh, branches. And I don't think Authoria shows those. It basically it functions more like just a file storage server, like, like a Dropbox or something like that. Yeah, but it's a, it's pretty familiar for scientists. You just like upload your, your files to it and they kind of like, you can access them from within like the, the main article. You can like import your files in and basically work on like a Google Docs style view of it. And yeah, you don't have to really worry about all the complexities of Git, even though it's actually built on top of Git on the, on the back end. So do you want to jump into your designs? Yeah. I think it might be a better way to show. Yep. Sure thing. So I can jump into some sort of designs of what this might look like. Okay. So this is a pretty rough, like just first kind of attempt at it, but kind of, if you imagine our current paper page, uh, this is sort of like the finished view of it on the paper. And yeah, it's basically our existing paper page the way we have it right now, but we've added like some tabs here and uh, this isn't like final or anything, but just like one way this could go where you can basically click on this files and it'll bring up pretty much uh, like a corresponding Git style repository for this page, which contains all the, like the back background stuff, like the PDF for it, maybe any like pictures that you're using in it, any images and figures. Uh, if you're using some code to like generate uh, like some of the figures, it could be stored here as well, pretty much like a Git repository. And yeah, you can pretty much commit your work here, ideally, and collaborate with other people and perhaps open issues, issues or peer reviews. Like it's kind of like a similar-ish concept. So maybe they could be merged on Research Hub into kind of the same idea where uh, you can comment on yeah, like existing stuff in the project and like bring up maybe like some suggest your own improvements and they could maybe get like merged in like pull requests kind of on GitHub. So that's sort of like what peer review is already doing. So kind of makes sense. And yeah, so this is kind of like the issues or pull requests, but in flavored kind of like in academia language. Uh, and then we could also so kind of the main goal of doing all this as well is to create or let people put their work in progress research on Research Hub. And then once they have it there, they can apply for funding uh, for their current research project, which lets us like disrupt the, the whole research flow basically. Yeah. Um, so that makes sense to to stop here for a second and just grab feedback on yeah. these designs and the concept in general. And then I have a couple open questions that I think would be worth asking just to get everybody's opinion. Sure. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions so far? Yeah. So uh, when you mention uh, apply for funding, are you thinking of like partnering with funding sources, or is it funded by uh, users or? Or through the site? Yeah, so currently 
uh, the plan is sort of something like you would apply and then the research hub moderator team would look over the grants and act sort of like as a, a committee and uh, like award RSC to, to your grant if it gets accepted. Uh, in the future, we might also like let users crowdfund this. So like if you find a, a repo that you really like, you could support it yourself in a crowdfunded style, similar to how GitHub actually has like letting lets people support repos or maybe something similar to like Gitcoin grants. Yeah. That's really so, cool. Thanks. Yeah. But yeah, it's uh, still early. So if you have any feedback, we'd love to hear it. Dragon, did you have a question? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, I just wanted to ask, what are the remaining actions below the uh, title of the paper? Uh, the six icons. Um, just below the title on the first screen. Oh, I see. Uh, these are, this is edit, share, support with RSC, flag, uh, remove, and then remove and ban. And those uh, last are just for moderators? Yeah, and yeah, these last two are for moderators. And th this is currently on the, the regular web website as well. Yeah, if you go on any paper, you'll see these icons on the current website. No, oh, sorry. Yeah, that's right. Have you, other... have you, Patrick, you have talked to Brian Nozick, right? Yep, yeah. Uh, so they have a similar structure already on OSF, right? It's kind of like it's uh, Git, the castrated version of Git, right? And the reason yeah. is that you don't have commits or forks there or whatever, mostly because you don't actually really need them for type of stuff people will applaud, right? Like if someone will applaud a giant Excel spreadsheet, it's kind of going to be dumb, you know, <laughs> like suggesting something for it. Or, or whatever or if people will applaud like the the executive file of their script right that's that was one of my big questions i think is like to hear if you guys see this as significantly different than what open science framework is offering so um, nami's saying that there is you know some fun, like fork functionality in osf yeah like scientists are not they have a <laughs> they just dump stuff there right. so it's it, it just chills there well one thing I want to kind of wonder too is like, if the repository is public, would you publish stuff to it when it's not done? What do you, so you, I think you, we need to disambiguate the term, the use of the term publish. There is a strong, very specific uh, meaning of the word publish in academia. And this is actually right. something I wanted to ask here because I was looking at the, this thing that you sent off Alphoria, mm -hmm. right? And uh, I see, it seems they have like two types of submissions. One of them, the people have actually published in a real journal, right? And just, it, they basically copy paste their resources here, similar to what people do in, in Research Hub. And the other one is where they publish on Alphoria itself. And the bad news for those articles, so here, for example, on this very page, like if you open the sex dependent differential transcript expression so now go to the doi see how it's uh yeah right here above it it, it in cursive it says the journal is euphoria in cursive that's published in euphoria now try to find this article anywhere else like use it google scholar you won't find this article unfortunately so it's a uh, it's a little bit of a dead Andy. I mean, I mean, <laughs> what's, what I mean by by find is like yeah. through through the yeah. citation managers or citation, what is it called like Web of Science. I don't know, like databases yeah. or something. So to be recognizable, essentially, and this is something you're gonna need for sure because I see here two paths, right? One path is. You stop calling it publishing, right? You 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 develop it as a supplementary, uh, I don't know, something for usability, something where people can store their preliminary data and get feedback from people, but they will actually publish in their journal of choice, right? That that's not going to be a research hub. 
and you you can be okay with that that's one path another path is you fight for the status of an actual journal but that one is going to be like hard i think you need to hire people who actually do have had experience you know doing a journal because it's a very specific skill set it's funny that's almost the exact two paths that uh pat Wu said yesterday when we first chatted about this uh feature so yeah i think we have to decide internally what we want to do um at least from my perspective when i spoke with brian nosek one thing that he thought that we could do was to be the peer review layer on top of their kind of file dump so like in theory someone could share a preprint and then like i, I think even like Authoria has buttons that say, hey, automatically submit to nature. I know BioArchive has that too. Like when you get published there, they'll help you with the submission process. So we could do something like that from a collaborative text editor or a PDF. And then also say, hey, instead, if you want to put it on Research Hub, we'll put up a bounty for peer review. You can do version control. And then eventually you can get the Research Hub sticker of peer review published in Research Hub, kind of similar to what Authoria is doing here. And it would be like a long-term prestige battle. It would take like a decade probably. I think like the path of Frontiers in is kind of like a similar one that we could follow because they're a pretty big journal now. Um, kind of came out of nowhere. And so- there, There's, the reputation is not great. Like esteemed uh, offers, if they have a choice to publish somewhere else, they do because people can't bully you behind your back if you publish in Frontiers too much. Right. Uh, do you, there is a middle path though that doesn't take a decade to you know get into working how about you do this will require some digging into licensing types but how about you mix it so you provide support for people during the initial process like think about it right now so OSF does not take your up your exclusivity for publishing somewhere else Right? So what you get from uh, OSF is you get these badges, right? So like you, you have done everything nicely in the process. And as you go to the journal, you will provide it as a supplementary proof of your quality, right? Uh, Research Hub can accomplish similar and more goals, right? So this would be the place where people essentially would do their pre-registration, get feedback from the community, get funded, but once their actual manuscript is ready, you maybe you do, you know, you, you get maybe like some sort of partial exclusivity deal. Like they are, they will be obligated to provide the open source version to Research Hub. And they will be required to mention Research Hub in the acknowledgements or maybe even, you know, as an emblem somewhere on top of the article, if the journal agrees to that, of course. Hmm. That, what do you think? Okay, um, I like that media idea. And I was just thinking, just why don't you offer both options for the authors? One option is to have it reviewed by them, such have community, and then publish. And here we can call it publish right now. I think before that, we can just call it a public repo or something like that. And uh, also, the author can choose to submit this Thing to journal to be reviewed. Like, does it, uh, is it the issue or is it too much uh, features? I think we could do something like that because even like the most of the preprint servers have similar functionality where they help like preprints essentially get reviewed by legit journals. So I think we could definitely say, hey, we'll help you get published if you, you know, share a preprint on Research Hub as well. Um, yeah, the middle path sounds reasonable to me. One other open question we had kind of with this whole sort of sharing of more details around papers rather than just the paper itself is should the like primary post here be a paper or a project where like maybe the first step of a project is sharing a pre-registration that people can then like in theory provide financial support to so you can go collect data, share that data eventually create a publication that would end up you know being published in another journal or on research hub like i guess the main question there is is it better to have the based post here be the paper that files are attached to and authors can use as a marketing material to get funding 
or is it better to have a project more like a GitHub repo where all kinds of different content types can be shared throughout the lifetime of a project? Well, think about it from the perspective of the funder, right? So if, if you have money and you want to invest, you probably, like how, what are the chances you're going to get on a random GitHub page and going to dig through the stuff there to figure out if it's, you know, quality content that you want support or not. You probably need, uh, you know, specialized, specially prepared as a marketing material, which is in a way pre registration, right? Like a short summary of what's being done. And then if it catches your interest, then you can start digging into, you know, the materials and whatever else they have. Because I think you are, you overestimate how useful and interesting the insides of the experiment are before it's finished. Like it's 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 confusing without guidance from the authors. It doesn't probably won't even work out of the box most of the time. Stuff like that. Right. So so one idea that just came to my head. Um, I spoke with a VC a couple of weeks ago who I was asking if he funded research. And I showed him experiment.com and he was like, I would never use this because this is way too technical. All the experiments, it's like the actual species name and stuff. And he was like, I just want to put money towards space travel. Like, I don't want to talk about like rocket fuels and how, you know, they combust and stuff. And so um, what I was thinking like might be cool um, is like the concept of an exchange traded fund where like if I just want to invest in space travel, I can invest in a variety of different researchers who are doing like various portions of space travel without me having to actually read any of their work or like, you know, so someone else decides like maybe it's a panel of like astrophysicists or something where that money goes. Um, a similar concept here is on Angel List. Have you guys heard of this? It's like a startup website for investing. Um, they have syndicates where it could be like, oh, I know that like Anton is really good at like uh, cognitive psychology. So like he has a portfolio of projects that he thinks are good and then people can give their money to Anton to then invest for them because he has a great track record of investing. So like, I, I think there's something when it comes to the funding of like helping people invest in space travel without making them do any cognitive work at all when it comes to like what that would be, that would be Anton's job to, to know where those funds should go or maybe like a panel of researchers who distribute it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think you're right. I think about this way, the stuff that's going to be on, in the repo is the ugly insides of a, of, of a, of, of a study, right? And this is a, like 5%, maybe 1% of the actual manuscript writing process, right? So, so the journals very likely when they accept the publication, in, in most of the cases, they don't even look back. Like you put a link into your uh, manuscript that you have it and they're like, okay, fine, you, good job, good job. You uploaded it, but no one's actually gonna go dig into it. So I think as a functionality, it definitely should exist what you're developing here. I don't know if people are gonna look at it when they're funding. They're probably still gonna look at the articulated you know, passage, why, you know, like proposal or pre-registration or something, something written in human terms. Right, yeah, maybe it's good to step back and ask everyone's opinion. Like, do you think this is a good, useful feature that we should build? Uh, what would improve the site? Yeah, any, any objections? <laughs> Uh, uh, I, I like I like this idea, uh, but having said that, I, I already have my paper on GitHub, and like it's already mm -hmm. a contributable. So like, yeah, yeah. for me, it's kind of hard to see yeah, would how you, it works. Right. Yeah. Would Would you like consider migrating your paper over to Research Hub to have it like in in Research Hub specifically? Because maybe we offer research coins for, uh, like, you can apply for a grant on here, maybe that you can't do on GitHub. Would yeah, that, that entice, entice you to switch over? The incentive is great, um, yes. But yeah, my gut, first gut feeling is, oh, I have another copy of paper somewhere and it's going to be a version control nightmare or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. especially considering this might, for the version one, might be like a stripped down version of Git. So it probably won't have all the features you, you might be used to. And that's sort of by design to like attract scientists who don't already know how to use Git. 
Right. Maybe yeah. you need to disambiguate the funding and the, right. the, the GitHub functionality, right? Because if there will be funding, like right now, the, the funding agencies, they don't want to look at your script. They don't want to look at your data. They want a message, right? They want a letter, a cover letter, explain what you're going to do. So right. I think this thing is wonderful, but it's not for funding, I believe. How, so, how far along in the process do people start funding? Like, how long would you have worked on your project until you're like, okay, I want to go get a grant, right? Like, is it before, like when you ha just have the idea, is it usually like when you have some data? Like when along, how far along in the research side? Normally like when you, you go give professorship, you get a startup grant. So that's like the school will give you some money and you get preliminary data in order to like show in your grant application, oh yeah, I'm good at getting, you know, whatever I'm proposing to do. So it's like, you always have a little bit of data you use for the grant application to get more stuff. This, these designs though, these remind me of something uh, Kobe also uh, brought up a couple months ago where in theory, like the, instead of the paper being the base, it's a project and the front page is like a wiki that might actually be content created for funders or the average person where you're not actually looking at the paper, you're not looking at the guts, you can if you want to, but like the front thing is like a, you know, a layman's English like marketing material to get people excited about what's going on like inside the repo. Would, would that be something you think could be tied to funding with just like a small summary up front that's like, hey, this is marketing, not exactly science. Yeah, I mean, this, this is, you had this idea long before, remember the pre-registration initiative, right? I mm -hmm. think these, the, the, I don't know what's called, the Git Research Hub, GitLab, GitLab or something, should be the back side of it. Like you open it as a normal Research Hub page where there is a yeah. proposal, pictures and everything, but then there is a button you can click that leads you to all the, you know, to all the ins insights. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's sort of the idea. This is kind of like the front facing, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. yeah simplified like um distilled version that research hub is trying what was originally trying to do but then uh -huh. like if you want to dig in and like actually see the code that do see all the context in the back uh like the development history ideally people are actually updating it like as they're going and then you could track the development history you could open issues on it and that kind of thing and that would be like the back end part of it but we've got like two minutes left here and I want to be conscious of every time. Um, what, one thing I do think would be useful because we're going to miss the other two topics, but I'll update everybody on the results from the um, program or whatever. Um, Kobe, do you have the designs that you showed during our sync like way back? I'd love to like see those too and see like, what do you think the biggest differences are? Um, and mm -hmm. it, it seems like kind of in some more vein, but I'd love to hear what everybody else thinks. Sure, I can stop sharing. <clears throat> yeah, do you want me to pull them up? If, if you have them locally, I can. I, I can. Do. Okay, cool. Yeah. Let me share my screen just one second. Can you see my screen? Yep, perfect. <clears throat> yeah, I think I had it um, in this file. It's a pretty big file, but let's see, hopefully it loads. Oh, there you go. Uh, let me find it. One second. So this is a paper. It was like, there you go. <clears throat> so something like this, where you have, this is the project's home. And I think, Joyce, you're talking about like this particular part of a project is analogous to a GitHub repository. And within this part of, uh, within the homepage of the project, you have something like a manifest where you can define certain information that you want others that are <clears throat> maybe not so technical to be able to get a glimpse into what this particular like uh, project or initiative, whatever you want to call it, is all about. And obviously there is like different sections to it. Like uh, I'll just quickly run through it, like take one minute to run through it. So this is the homepage. Then um, 
I also had like a thing for sources. Like, let's say you want to like uh, highlight snippets from like other papers or in Research Hub, you can save them into your sources. Uh, you know, maybe a good feature, maybe not. Then there is like an output area of the project where you could basically, um, <clears throat> you know, share ongoing information as part of your uh, initiative, like an hypothesis or experiment results and things like that. And people can collaborate, they can talk about it. It's kind of like a tweet, but more comprehensive, essentially. Um, and then I think uh, there was one more section here. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't think I have it, but it, there was like another section for discussions, essentially, where people can have like loose discussions. Oh, and yeah, the one thing I don't have here is publications. Uh, actually, no, it's part of the output. An output can be a paper or which can be a data set or whatever. <clears throat> okay, I'll pause here. Um, Joyce, is that, do you want me to point to anything else? No, that was awesome. Thank you so much for digging that up and sharing it. Uh, yeah, curious what everybody thinks. Looks very elaborate. I love it. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, and I think, um, yeah, what it's kind of like, I think the, the, the right approach here may be like, you know, uh, just like bringing the two worlds of what Thomas worked on and what some of the things I worked on and and like as Joy said, there is like, and Pat, there is like a lot of things we can do and it's just about like figuring out what do we focus on first and what's gonna give us the highest ROI and what's the path to making something, uh, working towards the goal, which is to publish, I believe, right? The original goal is uh, publish original research and content on Research Hub. Yeah, like it's, I think it's important to have Research should be a place where researchers actually like actively seek it because it's like the first place that some original research is. So if, if they just like want to know like uh, what, the, what the cutting edge of something that happened in neuroscience, uh, like they, they can go to research hub and like know that the paper was there first. And yeah, similar to like maybe what you would use archive right now for, for bio archive or meta archive. Mm -hmm like just to see the current cutting edge of research. The goal is to have like that kind of stuff be happening on Research Hub as well. Yeah, I have, uh, if you guys don't mind, I have one question. Uh, I wanna go back to Pat's original question, which is kind of, I'm not sure Pat, what was your exact question, but I'm very curious about if people, if researchers are going to be publishing regularly on a platform, any platform. Um, and the reason why I'm, why I'm curious is because, you know, in any other industry, there is a competitive advantage. And yes, we're all working towards like open science, et cetera, but it kind of sucks if you're posting your stuff and maybe someone else also working towards like an open science thing, publishes it, and now you're kind of like, oh, great. I tried to do something good, but I'm not even getting credit for um, all the time I invested, et cetera. Uh, can you, there is a workaround, uh, there is a workaround around this on uh, OSF. You can leave some of the content of your project hidden with a timestamp so you people can kind of see the preview. So you have declared that you are going to do this stuff, but you don't specify how but people already see that there is something posted is just hidden and it's going to be revealed after let's say the data collect are collected or maybe it's published or as a condition. Interesting. <clears throat> um, so what, what do you see? Do you see like a, like an abstract type thing, like a little preview kind of thing? Yeah, maybe like, well, the, <laughs> I don't know if this is a, people ha share this idea in business world, but, Ideas by themselves, they're not worth anything. They're garbage. Everyone has ideas, right? The implementation is what's important. So maybe people can describe what is the research question, what is the rationale, how they're going to tackle it, but they're not going to reveal what is the, like, the study design. Like, what are the conditions? How are they going to be implemented? That's going to be problematic if, if, if the general audience doesn't believe that they can, you know, 
make it work. Like if I'm going to propose, I'm going to do cold fusion in my backyard without sharing the uh, you know the details. Maybe no one's going to believe me. <clears throat> Got it. Uh, thanks. Yeah, it makes sense. So I have a question for um, the community members who are here. I think like maybe two calls back or so where we were discussing that uh, another feature we were planning to do for Q3. It was like the kind of like meta studies, like hypothesis evidence graph thing where you have like a set of papers and you can sort of like vote on them to see if it like whether it uh, supports or doesn't support some hypothesis. Like, do you think that this like GitHub style repo feature is like should be prioritized before that other feature or after or what is your sense on that which feature gets you more excited um i think like anton and nami I th you were there and someone else but, well, we will do sorry what's that yeah, like, do, do you, if you remember, like, a few calls ago when we discussed that other feature, um, that was, like, something that Brian wanted us to build for Q3, and this is, like, another feature, and we're just trying to figure out sort of priorities here, like, what the community thinks would be more valuable. Uh, is it the one that where you create more... Yeah, maybe... So more um, boss types? It, right, maybe it, it would be like a like a research question. So it would be like, oh, yeah, that's one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here are all the papers that say the world is flat. You know, right. and then you can criticize yeah. that hypothesis. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it it looks very solid, and I think it's uh, easy to implement. It's I like I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily. It's it's like for me, it's going to be like a public poll in a way. Like I wouldn't uh, view it as like I, I come in and I see. We, you know we, which uh, alternative is correct because it's like if if it's gonna if it if it would be moderated by specialists who know how to select articles who are, i don't i trust are not going to cherry pick but this one is also interesting right it, it can be an interesting starting point for digging and i believe there were three options for the design yeah and i do remember liking the left most the best but, but <laughs> this is the extent of my memory yeah i mean maybe we can quickly just pull up the designs and like sort of quickly summarize the feature and get everyone's sense on like whether mm -hmm. like what we should build first oh yeah yeah so the right most was a wiki style where everyone posts and edits the same passage this one i i i, I heard hate personally unfortunately the one where everyone um, introduces the basic people add articles that they think are relevant right and so they Patrick, could you open the designs well and they categorize uh, these articles as this is in favor of uh you know one answer to the question and this is in favor of the opposite answer to the question correct yep exactly yep okay yeah 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 i think it's it's already it's like it's good to go Imp can can you can implement it today it's going to work well ideally in the ideal world there will be some backtracking and moderating like people can go back and be like no this one like should not be a part of the waiting procedure even if it's super upvoted like it was misleading and people got baited but it you know no longer applies so so we can thomas i think uh we probably still have more thinking to do on this feature anyway so we can come back next week and come with a little bit more solidified designs and try and get a better temperature okay. so yeah we're like 10 minutes over now and thank you guys so much for going through that and thank you thomas for presenting your ideas there i think that was pretty cool um does anybody have any questions or anything before we hop off oh we i have uh the results too from the um power user program where anton i think did about a million comments He's a, so seven and seven on each with 11 responses. So he's been teared shit up. Um, Philip and Nick also did a ton. I think I've got uh, one post from Philip and four comments. And then Nick has seven posts and seven comments. And both Philip and Nick, two of those comments were uh, responses. So um, yeah, that was super successful. I guess I lied about trying to jump off. But um, do you guys have any thoughts on this week versus last week versus anything we should do next week? Because I, I think like 
generally this last week has been freaking awesome. Like there's a lot of really interesting stuff that's actually being shared on Research Hub. So. There is something about visibility of the comments themselves. People don't even upvote them. Like people upload the, the articles, but not the comments. I still don't know. Like if you have you brainstormed what would be the ways to, you know, incentivize people to meaningfully upvote some posts that they like, but not other posts they don't like or comments. I've noticed that too. It's just, it's like harder. It's more clicks to actually get to the comments. So it's yeah. like, you know, just takes a lot of time to go through and comment or up with them all, especially if there's a good conversation going. Um, I wonder, yeah, we, we can think about it and get back to you because I've had that same thought and we need to make it easier to appreciate like good commentary on a paper. It's even more about I think it's, Yeah, I think it's a lot of it is the design because the design is focused on the paper and it doesn't feel like the comments are like tier one. It feels like paper and then everything else. So. Do you think you can make a third tab or that you, you're going to have posts, totally. papers, and comments, and then in the comments, it's just going to be so yeah, still like select. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, maybe. But I, I, I think it, ha it should happen one degree earlier too. Like, or like, I mean, if you go to the paper itself, it doesn't 100% feel like you should read comments. Kind of like when you go to Amazon product, you don't feel like, oh, I should read the reviews. You know, you just see like, oh, here is a general rating, and then here's what the product is like. People are not yeah. scrolling through those things at the bottom. So, Anton, one thing we can do is give some of the upvotes from the paper to the commenters. So, like, do, are, is this for RSC earnings, or you just do you want to have like appreciation of your comment with upvotes? No, we, just it, it's not even about appreciation. Like, I I view them. I think that they're like views. Like I'm okay, so I don't know how to disentangle. Like, do people see them? They just don't upload right. them, or do people generally don't Not even scroll them. down? Right. Yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah, we'll we'll work on that. We'll come back with something where they're a little bit more prominent. Mm -hmm. Cool. Does anybody have anything else? Awesome. Thank you guys so much. That was super helpful. And thanks for hanging on for another fifteen minutes too. That was great. See you guys next yeah. week. Thanks, guys. Yeah. See ya. See ya. See ya.